Father in heaven, we ask that you will speak through your word. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I also want to thank uh, Brother Joe for special music. Appreciate that so kindly. I'm going to, you see the, the title of this morning, Open the Right Door. It means you have two options. You know, in life, you only have two options. You know that? You only have, it's either good or bad, Jesus or Satan, wheat, tear, sheep, goat, righteous, you're wicked, hell, heaven. That's it. I only have two choices, so open. we must open the right door this morning, okay? Now, I'm going to, um, I like teaching, because when you teach, you learn. Well, I want you to answer the questions you see on the screen. Uh, don't hesitate, okay? It's either yes or no, two options, okay? So answer is yes, answer no, and you answer quickly. Question number one, was Jesus' mother named Mary? Yes, okay. Number two, was Jesus the Son of God? Yes. Number three, did Jesus die for all sins? Okay, yes. Uh, number four, did Jesus die on the cross? Very good. You all are very bright. <laughs> now, this is interesting what we have on the screen. By the way, I still want to visit every home. I visited a number of your homes already. Please, you can invite me. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm, real, I'm serious. I want to visit every home here. I love visitation. I love it. Because we're all one, we're all a church family. Isn't that right? So please invite me. I'd love to come. Have worship at your home. I love it. So here we have here, uh, all of these are cor- oh, correct. But I have a problem with one of the questions on the screen. Which one do you think it is? Okay, Ed said the second one. Does anyone have a problem with that one? No, that's, that's clear in the Bible. Which one poses a problem? It's not the second one. Okay, number four, okay. Did Jesus die on the cross? That's no problem. We know that's true. That's even historical. Oh, there's a problem to him. There's something wrong with number three. Who agrees with that? Okay. Now, let's look at this. We saw two hands went up, and Sarah and Carolyn said there's a problem with number three. Well, let's look at it. Did Jesus die for all sins? And we have the answer here is yes. Now, the answer is actually yes and no. Now, the problem lies with this word. What's that word? Oh, we're learning this morning. All. Does the Bible teach that Jesus died for all sins? Of course. The Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from how many? All sin. The Bible is crystal clear. So why is there a problem with the third question? There's a problem because we do know that the Bible says, even when it says all sins, this is referring to all sins that are possible to be forgiven. You follow that? All sins that are possible to be forgiven because all sins, (laughs) there's one sin at least, no forgiveness. The Bible says in Matthew 12, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. See, that's all again, the word all. But, conjunction, meaning something is going to change. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So there it is. The Bible teaches. There is a sin. Jesus died for all sins, but there is a sin. Hey, the blood blood of Jesus is not covering that sin. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You can blast, you can talk against Jesus, you can talk about the Father, but when it comes to the Holy Ghost, no forgiveness there. There is no pardon for that sin. So what then is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? To make things simple, It's when an individual says no 
to God so often, he or she will literally get to a place where they can no longer say yes to him. You keep on pushing and pushing and you keep on rejecting the promptings of the Holy Ghost trying to bring conviction in your life. You keep on saying no, 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 no. You get to a point you cannot say yes. You're gone. Keep on rejecting. There's no forgiveness for that. But we thank God. I believe no one here has committed the unpardonable sin. I believe that. You can say amen if you like. <laughs> right? I believe that's good news. I believe that. Since we're talking about two choices and sin, we want to look at the destructive nature of sin. How bad is it? Terrible. It's terrible. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. That's why we need Jesus. Amen? We need Jesus. Genesis chapter 4. The unpardonable sin. How destructive is sin? The Bible says in Genesis 4 verse 7. Are you there? If you can't find Genesis, I'll pray for you. <laughs> is everyone there? Genesis chapter 4, we know the story since cradle roll. With Cain and Abel, and uh, Abel, he brought the required sacrifice of an animal because blood had to be shed. But we know that, what, what did Cain bring? The fruit, he brought mangoes and persimmons. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> Cain decided he was going to do his own thing, be his own boss. And you know, God did not like that. But God is so fair. Listen to what he says in verse 7. In Genesis 4, verse 7, the Bible says, If, talking to Cain, if thou doest well, just do the right thing, shall thou not be accepted? I will accept you. And if thou doest not well, sin life at the door, and unto thee, referring to sin, shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. Now the Bible says, and unto thee shall be his desire. Most scholars believe that's referring to sin. Sin desires us, brothers and sisters. Now, this word desire is very interesting because I love to learn and I like to teach. Just love it. I believe when you come to church, you should learn something. The word desire comes from the Hebrew word teshuka. Can you say that? Teshuka. Very good. <laughs> A plus. Now, the word teshuka is only used three times in the entire Old Testament. Only three times. That's it. This word desire. That's one time we read in Genesis 4, verse 7. Two more times it's used, referring, uh, remember in verse 7, it's referring to sin and its desire for us. The other two times the word desire is mentioned in the Old Testament, this word teshukah, is in Genesis 3, 16, and it says, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy, what everybody? Desire, to shukar shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. This is in the context of marriage, husband and wife. The third reference of the word. I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Again, in the context of marriage. The Bible is teaching us something very important as it pertains to sin. Sin wants to have a relationship with every single person here. Sin wants that relationship to be as deep and as close as the covenant of marriage. Sin does not want to divorce you. Sin does not want to go on a vacation. Sin wants to be with us until death do you part. Wow. Wow. That's serious. This nature of sin, a sin does not want to let you go, brothers and sisters. And this is why we need Jesus. We need Jesus. The Bible is so fair. Listen to the text. Studying the Bible this morning. Go back to verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, now listen to God. He says, if you don't do the right thing, you have two choices. If you don't open the right door, he says, and if thou doest not well, sin, what's the next word? 
lieth at the what? The door. Now the Hebrew word there uh, for lieth is not saying it's laying down like when you go to sleep at night. No, it's lying. It's the, it's the Hebrew word rabat, which means crouching. It's saying that sin is crouching at the door of your heart, Cain. Make the right choice. For example, let me illustrate. The word here gives a picture of an animal crouching. For example, this is the door. God says sin is at the door and is crouching. Sin is crouching at the door, Cain, and is ready to pounce upon you like an animal. It's the same word to describe an animal that is crouching down. Oh, oh yeah, we know what the Bible says. Now this is fascinating. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeing whom he may, what about everybody, devour. The Bible says Satan is crouching at the heart of Cain. He is crouching. Sin is there crouching, crouching, ready to pounce and to devour him. Cain, you have a choice. Sin is lying at the door. See, what Satan does, he crouches down. He wants to devour us because he's a deceiver. He, He is slick. But you know, God, Jesus, he's a gentleman. Jesus does not crouch down and try to pounce upon. No, no, the Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and what? Jesus, is, he's a nice guy. He's really nice. He says, I'm not going to crouch down. I'm not going to try to attack you. I'm going to stand at the door of your heart. I'm just going to wait for you to open up and let me inside. That's all. God says, Cain, Satan. He's at the door of your heart. You got a choice to make, Cain. You do what's right. I'll accept you. I'll accept you. But sin is at the door. Cain, you got a choice to make. We know the choice Cain made. Have mercy. Cain opened the door to sin. Satan's lying there, he's crouching, ready to pounce, just waiting for Cain to open the door. And at the same time, the Holy Ghost was also there. You got to believe that. He opened the wrong door. He opened his heart to sin. And we see after that decision, we never find Cain ever repenting of that sin. You don't find him repenting. Lost. He's lost. Because he opened the wrong door. Hmm. We need Jesus, brothers and sisters. We need Jesus. Make the right choice, Cain. You didn't do it. Anybody know who this is? And don't say Pastor Alvin either. <laughs> some, some people say black people look alike. <laughs> this, you know this guy here? I'll explain. Now, this guy, does this look like a glamour shot? Yes or no? Now, nah, that's not a glamour shot. That's not a, a, a picture that's very glamorous and nice you put in a church directory. This is a mug shot. Prison. This guy's a prisoner. Look at his rap sheet. Look how long this thing is. See, his deadly weapon, weapon, arm, robbery, 1997, all this. You see, this took place in Palm Beach County. I grew up in West Palm Beach, Florida. You know that. I grew up there for 23 years. This guy goes on a a spree of robbing bars and nightclubs, West Palm Beach. Go back to the picture. You know why I put his picture here? His name is Ernest Barnes. We went to middle school together. We shared a locker for an entire year. Man, we were tight. Real, Real cool, real tight. This guy was super silly, very silly guy. You saw we graduated together. We graduated high school in 97. You didn't seem to have any violence. No, real nice guy. No, not violent at all. Real silly and goofy. But you know what happened? He decided to hang out with the wrong crowd. We used to go to his house in the projects. My brother and I hang out with him all the time. 
I remember we went over there one day and he was dressed in all black, looking kind of strange. Long story short, him and his buddies started robbing people. He got scared. He shot somebody execution style. Now he's in jail for the rest of his life. Ernest Barnes shared a locker with him. Went to his house. What if I would have gone and hung out with him? You know what happened to my brother? You know what happened to Ernest? This guy I went to school with, shared a locker with for an entire year. Real close, you know what happened to him? Satan was crouching down one day. And Satan was telling him, hey son, do this, do that. You're going to make a lot of money. You don't have to work for it. Just get a gun. Do it, do it, do it. Pull the trigger. He pounced. And now he's in prison the rest of his life. Why? Because my friend Ernest decided he's going to open the wrong door. This is, brothers and sisters, this is why we need Jesus. You and I, you are one decision away from leaving Jesus. You can leave Jesus at any moment. At any time, I can decide I'm done with this stuff. I will no longer pastor here. I'm done. I will no longer be at Asian church. I'm waiting for somebody to say something. Man, no one said, hey, we watch it. Man, let me continue this. Man, let me continue this. (laughs) Hard to digest. Man, no one said anything. (laughs) The point is, hey, you can leave Jesus anytime. You can leave. You can leave. We all can leave. We're one decision away from leaving. This is why we need Christ, because that sinful, carnal nature we have, you don't know what you will do outside of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you are not, I am not, we are not above any sin. Do you know that you can murder somebody? You don't believe that, though. You don't believe that. You can kill somebody. But we think, nah, I've been an Adventist all my life. <laughs> Come on, folks. That's the same thing King David thought. If you would have told David, hey, David, you're a shepherd now. You're going to be a king, and then you're going to murder somebody. You're going to have some, you're going to plot. You're going to give the man his own death warrant. You're going to do that. And you're going to sleep with his wife, get her pregnant. You're going to do all that. David would say, nah, not me. I'm a man after God's heart. You're not above any sin. I am not above any sin. We need Jesus. And Jesus says, all I'm doing this morning, can you just open the right door? That's all. Go back to the verse, verse 7, as we study the Bible. Go back to verse 7. The Bible says, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Now listen to the text, talking about sin. And unto thee shall be his desire, sin, and thou shalt, what everybody? Rule over him. You see that? The Bible gives us hope. You and I, do you know that you can rule over sin? You haven't made the right choice. Oh, I don't know about that version. <laughs> what did it say? What did it say? Exactly, you should. Now, the only way you can or I can. Rule over sin is by the power of what? Jesus Christ. Or what's that power that, give, that convicts the world of sin? Holy Spirit. Thanks, Sarah. So it's the Holy Spirit. The only way you and I can rule or have victory over sin is through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's it. Remember, we're talking about opening that right door. Because we don't want to commit the unpardonable sin. But the Bible says you can rule over it, or you should, like Sarah said. You, can, you should rule over it. Revelation chapter 1. Let's go to Revelation. We'll start at the beginning. Let's go to the end. If you can't find Revelation, come to this altar. <laughs> Revelation, are you there? Revelation, this is fascinating. I love it. <laughs> Revelation. You should rule over it. 
Sin should not have dominion over us. You know that, brothers and sisters? The Bible teaches that. Sin doesn't have to have dominion over you. It doesn't have to have dominion over me. No. But we need Holy Ghost power. Are you there, brothers and sisters? Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Uh, we'll go to verse 10 as we continue our study here. Revelation 1 verse 10. Are you there? Yes. All right. The Bible says, And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. What day is that, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. According to Isaiah 58, that's the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in the book, and sent it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea, so the seven churches. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden, what everybody? Lampstands, or my Bible says candlesticks. Now listen to the verse in verse 13. And in the midst, or the middle, now watch the text. In the middle of the seven candlesticks, one like the, unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Please tell me, who is the Son of Man? Now come on, folks, only three people answering these questions. I'm going to ask again. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too fast. And we should all be answering it. Who is the Son of Man. Jesus. So the Bible says you have seven candlesticks and Jesus is standing in the middle of them. So the next question begs to be asked, what do these candlesticks represent? Well, let's go to verse 20. Let's go to verse 20. What do these candlesticks represent in verse 20? Remember, we're talking about help. We need help to rule over sin. Verse 20 says, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven, what everybody? So the Bible is crystal clear, okay? The Bible says that who is in the middle of the seven churches? Jesus, all right? Jesus, I've got a picture here so we're clear. He's in the middle of the seven churches. He is in the church. Thank you, sweetheart. He's in the church. Now, in order to, of course, you have fire. Like Luella showed this. You know, that's a good illustration. We can just go right here, right, Luella? You see this, this lamp? In order for that wick to burn, to have a flame, what has to be in here? Oil. Oil. Fuels the flame. Oil, according to the Bible, very easy to prove, oil represents the what? Or who? The Holy Spirit. So here we have Jesus, these, these seven candlesticks representing the seven churches, Ephesus, Pergamos, we know it, representing the seven churches. You have to have oil here to burn, to, to, to have that flame. So the Bible is telling us every church is full of Holy Ghost power. Mm, Holy Ghost power there. And we're learning this morning. Holy Ghost power. Now the question must be asked. If the Holy Ghost is in every single church, what then is his message? The Holy Ghost must have a message for every single church. I love it. Well, let's go see the, let's see the message. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 now. Remember we're talking about the Holy Ghost and we need power to have victory. Now I'm repeating myself for emphasis. Oil represents who everybody? I love it. Oil, Holy Spirit. Oil, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, now listen to the, the Holy Spirit to every church. The Bible says in Revelation 2 verse 7, this is Ephesus. And then uh, uh, Smyrna and so forth, Pergamos. So the first church, verse 7. We're not going to read everything, all these verses, but skip to verse 7. Are you there? Revelation 2, verse 7. Listen to what the Spirit says. He that hath an ear, let him or her hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. That's the first one. So the Spirit is saying something. And we're not going to read it all. Go to verse 11, the second church. Verse 11. 
This is smart enough. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So the Spirit is talking. Go to verse 17, the third church, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go to verse 29, the fourth church, verse 29. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go to chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 6. Chapter 3, verse 6, the fifth church. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 13. Go to verse 13. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go to the last church, the seventh church, verse 22. Verse 22, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. In other words, in all seven churches, the Holy Ghost is shouting. Can you just listen? I need you to have an ear, Jesus is saying, because the Holy Ghost is trying to communicate to every single church. Wow. Talking about Holy Ghost power. This oil that fuels the flame. Because you have to understand, Satan wants to put your flame out. He wants to take that oil out of you so you can commit the unpardonable sin. He wants to... Now, come on, folks. Don't let him extinguish your flame this morning. The Bible says God is just shouting out, just shouting. Can you just listen? But you know what happens? You know what happened? So sad. When you get to the last church, when you get to Laodicea, you know what happens? The Bible teaches us in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus is in the middle of the church. He is in the church. You get to the end of chapter 3, listen to what happens in verse 20. Go to verse 20. The Bible says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the what, everybody? Door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Wow. Here we have Jesus started out being inside of the church. And once you get to the end of chapter three, he is now outside of the church knocking, trying to get back in. what I just said. You know how serious that is? He's not just knocking, he is calling. Now, can't you just open the door? Can't you just open the door? A lot of times we can't hear that call from Jesus or that still small voice because the gossip is too loud. Mm. All the movies we watch is just too loud. It's clogging the mind. Can't hear that small voice. So many distractions around us, social media. I found myself the other day, I'm going to confess. Confession is good for the what? <laughs> Brother Ed, you won't believe it. I got a Facebook account last month. You saw it? Why didn't you ask me to be your friend then? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I accepted you. That's right. Yeah, that's right, Lord. I accepted you. <laughs> I got a Facebook account the other day. I found myself being on that, like, for like an hour. Like, I like this photo. I like this photo. Commenting. I mean, social media is good. Nothing wrong with it. YouTube, awesome for the gospel. Facebook, powerful for the gospel. Twitter, great. But these things can be distractions as well. And I was distracted for a long time. And you know when you waste time, it's like you don't feel good about it. I'm not just wasting an hour of pressing like. I like your photo. <laughs> yeah, and then you got to make a comment, and then you got to reply. <laughs> the point is, sometimes we have so many things. God says, do you hear that voice? I'm outside knocking. The church has got so bad, Jesus, they kicked me out. Man. They kicked Jesus out of the church. Why? Because those folk were not hearing. In every single church, the Holy Ghost was trying to speak. Wow. 
Brothers and sisters, we need Jesus. We need Jesus. Last text. But we need that oil, brothers. We need it. We, we need so much power. I want, I want latter rain power. That's what I really want. You know, we have an evangelism series at our church, your sister church. You know, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. It's good. Really good meeting. Nothing wrong with that. I want to see, you know, because we have like, other Christians that come in like Baptists, Pentecostals. But I've never seen, maybe you've seen, I've never seen like diehard Muslims be converted to Adventists. I've never seen it. I'm sure there's stories. I've never seen it though. I've never seen like a diehard a Hindu or someone who, what's the religion in China? Buddhism. Buddhism. Yeah, I've never seen like a diehard Buddhist. I've seen a lot of Baptists. Yeah, they already believe in Jesus. Yeah, it's hard. It's still hard. Yeah, it's, it's still hard to convert a Baptist to Catholic, but we're still on the same, uh, we still believe in the cross, so it's not as hard. But man, I want the time to come when you just see Buddhists and Hindus just flooding the church. And that's, that's only going to um, take place when the latter rain hits. That Holy Ghost power, that oil, when that Holy Ghost hits in the latter rain, man, this thing's going to take off. Oh, man, we, we, yeah, we could do a lot of sharing. I don't know how much we share. Hey, sharing is a big element. But I believe, man, we're still waiting for that latter rain power. Isn't that right? I want that power. It's awesome. I don't want to miss it. Because every single person here, you can receive the latter rain. Last text. Last text and we're done. How do I know I haven't committed the unpardonable sin? We'll close. This will be the last one. How do I know that? You know how I said I don't believe anyone here has committed the unpardonable sin? Because if you committed the unpardonable sin, you would have absolutely no desire for spiritual things. You definitely would not be here. King Saul. Wow. At one point, he has so much Holy Ghost in him he was prophesying with prophets. The people said, hey, isn't he the son of Kish? And he's also a prophet? That brother was bad. And when I say bad, I mean good. He was awesome. That was 1 Samuel chapter 10. He had the Holy Ghost prophesying. You get to chapter 16, the Holy Ghost left him. You get to 1 Samuel chapter 28, he's having a seance. He's with a witch. That's the unpardonable sin. He had no desire for spiritual things. No desire. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He took that money, he threw it, he gave it back. Judas, did Judas confess his sin? Yeah, but he wasn't sincere. Did Judas, Judas find himself back in church? No. Judas found himself going down to Lowe's getting a rope. Took that rope, threw it around the tree killed himself. He had no desire for spiritual things. Brothers and sisters, if you committed that sin, you definitely would not be in Sabbath school this morning. How hard is it for folk to come to Sabbath school? And most of you came. I repeat for emphasis, I don't believe anyone here has committed the unpardonable sin. In other words, every single person here you still have hope. I'll say amen for you. Amen! I said you still have hope. Just, man, amen, praise God. Man, what does it take? Amen, hallelujah, I have hope to make it. Luella said we're the wrong colored skin. You know, <laughs> but hey, isn't that good news, church family? Amen. We can make it. Amen. You have hope. I have hope that when Jesus comes back, we can ascend to meet him. We can make it. Hallelujah. We can make it. Can't wait. I close with this text. What door do we open this morning? I am the door, Jesus said. 
by me, if any man, woman, boy, or girl enter in, he shall be what? Saved. Amen. Mm, Amen. That's the hope we have, brothers and sisters. Say, so, hey, you enter in by this door, you're going to be saved. You will go to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But I know how it is, though, folks. You know, life is rough sometimes. Life is rough and it's tough. Somebody said, especially if you're married. Don't say amen to that, though. Don't say amen to that. <laughs> especially if you're married. <laughs> but life is rough and tough. Married, single, doesn't matter. We all have challenges. We all have temptations. Just hold on, brothers and sisters. Hold on a little longer. Just hold on. We're going to make it, folks. Hold on to Jesus. I'm going to close with this one. You know, in April of last year, there was an oil tanker that caught fire. Not a tanker, but a, a rig, I guess. And you see all the flames, and they have the, the fire boats out there trying to extinguish the flame. And so they needed more help. So more boats came. And you see this right here? High flames. Smoke. Seen for miles. And very interesting. The news lady on CNN News, she was talking about it. She was saying, it, it, we, it seems like they, they just cannot put out the flames. We cannot put out the flames. She was talking to the, one of the, the guys in charge of uh, the fireboat. And this is what the man said. Now quote. Fascinating. The man said to the CNN reporter, the reason why we cannot extinguish the flame is because it has too much oil has too much oil. Brothers and sisters, I really hope that when Satan looks at Alvin and he tries to tempt me to fall, Satan and the demons will say, oh, no, 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 we can't touch Alvin. He has too much oil. Too much oil. Too much, oil. Too much Holy Ghost is in him. We, no, let's move on to the next person. Got too much oil. Let's move on to Ed. Let, let's try to get Ed. Can get Alvin. Man, Ed has too much oil. Can't do it. Let's try to get Luella and Dell. They got too much oil. How awesome it'll be. Satan tries to come to every single one of us. And he fails. For one reason. We have too much oil. Too much Holy Ghost power in us. Brothers and sisters, we need to cry out, plead for the Holy Ghost, plead for the latter rain, because we can receive that power and see Muslims and Hindus come fill this place, because one day it's going to happen. A lot of them will come in, and a lot of Adventists will go out. The Adventists that go out, they had little oil. They're going to take off. But brothers and sisters, if we just hold on a little longer, we're going to make it. And there, look, every I say it all the time, every single person here, you can go to heaven. You can go, why can't you be saved? Why? You're going to allow the Satan to discourage you and tell you you're too bad to be lost and get discouraged and down and out, suicidal thoughts. What? What? No, brother, no. Hold on a little longer. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it, bro. We're gonna make it. My first appeal this morning. Look, Jesus is awesome. Jesus is amazing. All heads bowed and eyes closed. First appeal. We're just saying to God. God. 
I need help. I got a sin. I need I this sin it, it desires me. And I like it. God, I need help. I need the Holy Ghost to empower me to open the right door. And God will give you that power. You're struggling with the sin. You know what that sin is. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I just want you to think. What is that sin that desires you? Desires a relationship? Give that thing to Jesus. Say, well, pastor, I gave it to Jesus so many times. Hey, keep on. Be persistent. Don't ever give up on Jesus. My second appeal, you really desire to be full of that oil. You really desire to receive the latter rain, that power from on high, so this message can go around the globe. You really want that power, that latter rain power. If that's your desire, I'm going to ask you to kneel with me. And we're going to talk to God about it. I'm going to give you, my church family, a few moments to pray. You pray. You tell God exactly what's on your heart, and then I will close out. Father in heaven, we're just so grateful for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we come to you uh, this, this afternoon now on our knees, giving to you whatever sin, that sin that we cherish, that sin that we love, that darling sin. Oh God, we need the power for, of the Holy Ghost to sever it. Oh God, the Spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is so weak. God, Cain opened the wrong door and he was lost. King Saul opened the wrong door and he was lost. Judas opened the wrong door and he was lost. But the Bible gives us all hope because King David, he opened the wrong door as well. But the difference was David, he confessed and repented. And we believe that King David will be saved eternally. And so, Lord, we bring to you every sin and we ask for forgiveness and cleansing from all unrighteousness. And we believe that you will indeed forgive us and give us power to have victory over that sin because sin killed Jesus. We, all, we pray for the second appeal. Lord, all of us, we're declaring before all of heaven, we want the power of the latter rain. We want the Holy Ghost to fall down upon us. We want to see this place packed with Jews and Hindus and Muslims. Oh, God. God, that power is going to come one day. And Ellen White says that the latter rain will be falling on hearts all around us and some will miss it. Lord, I don't want to miss it. No one here wants to miss that power. Oh God, fill us with the oil, that Holy Ghost power, that when Satan comes to us and those demons they say, no, 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 no. We cannot get Alvin or Fresno Asian to fall. They, they just have too much oil. Oh, God, bless us the remainder of the Sabbath. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, let every child of the King say, Amen. God bless you.